Hello. Um, I want to talk to you about true communication or how to ask for help. And I've got, I think, 15 slides in total. So I will go through it. Um, the first concept that I present will take a little bit because that's a huge introduction, but then we slow it down. So I hope you stay with me. Um, this is very important to um, work with the Project Love Method, understanding how true communication works and how to ask for help. So let's start with our first slide. So here you see concept one. You always get the result of your own mind. Nothing can interfere with this. So this concept is huge because all that you experience is in your mind. It's of your mind. IDs leave not your mind or their source. So therefore, you are entirely responsible for everything you think and experience. Each and every one of us has a reality that is singular. And so, um, when it's been said in certain religions, that we are created in the likeness of God, such it is. God has a singular reality and we are created in the likeness of God and therefore our reality is singular. If you cannot assume responsibility for your own mind, the thoughts and emotions and feelings that happen into it, then you're giving away your power of being in command. So again, concept number one, you always get the result of your own mind. Nothing can interfere with this. You can pray to a savior, a guru, a, a guide, a guardian, an angel. Doesn't matter. Not even a therapist or drugs can interfere with this truth. You always get the result of your own mind. Again, ideas leave not your source, your mind. You are entirely responsible for everything you think and experience. Your reality is singular. So I had several near death experiences and I um, browsed and read many near death experiences other people had and mystical experience. And so I'm aware of two realities. Number one, there's the reality of space time and more on that later. But also there's the reality of God's world, which is a spiritual world of energy and information, perhaps, if you want to call it that. So in the reality of God, every moment is brand new, free from the last. And Second, there is no link of memory to the past. Therefore, in God's reality, there is complete freedom, meaning there's no control. There's no like, oh, if I do this now, then in the next moment or later on, I will have this outcome. There's no predetermination. And so the universe or God's creation or God's world um, is completely free. And therefore, there's no control. Any idea of control will immediately be undone. And therefore, um, there's complete uncertainty. You never know what's going to happen in the next moment. And therefore, this meme that's been used a lot where it says, in God, all things are possible, it literally means that. Each and every moment, all things are possible and nothing is predetermined. And so cause and effect occur simultaneously in the moment. So when you think of something, bang, right? At the moment you think it, the result is there. And then it's kind of this odd reality where creation is already completed. All time goes on all the time. And there's just this simultaneous effect of the entire construct of your mind 
occurring and falling apart in the same instant. Yes, it's quite amazing. But as they say in quantum physics, for example, um, you are simultaneously alive and dead. Or like some uh, teachings of A Course in Miracles say, you're going in and out of time all of the time. It's happening simultaneously. Are you aware of this when you're in space and time? No, absolutely not. And it's important to note it is um, two levels of reality, God's reality and the reality we have on planet Earth, which is a space of space and time. And those two worlds do not meet. So a lot of these spiritual memes work perfectly and effortlessly in God's reality, but not in space and time per se. So how do I see God's reality? Well, God's reality is out of time. However, reality on planet Earth is time. And time and space are the same thing. It takes me five minutes to walk to the coffee shop. Well, so there's a spatial distance and it takes time to go from one place to the other. So there definitely is this separation of the cause and effect in a timely manner. And time means space. Um, so I see life on Earth as an expression of memories. So humans start with one cell and there's DNA in that cell and there is the help of RNA out of that one cell. It's the memory of making another human being. But you can do this with a corn kernel, you put it in the ground, you nurture it correctly. And um, yeah, a corn plant will grow out of it with new corn kernels. And so the cycle goes on. So life as we know it on planet Earth to me is memory. And memory is plastic, small rudiment left of this creative thinking. And that's the part of the mind that just daydreams away effortlessly. It goes on all the time. And a lot of people hate it. Some people do meditation techniques to get rid of it. But really, it is natural. It is creative. It's the mind that's bored easily because it's used to being in God's reality, where everything goes bang in one instant. A whole universe is made in the same instant the whole universe collapses in on itself only to redo it and hopefully in a new enhanced way. So if you look, for example, at sound, suddenly humans were able to record sound and reproduce it first in mono gramophone players. And now we've advanced to wireless Bluetooth speakers with Dolby sound and theatre sound and it's 7.1, 9.1, whatever it is. So it's still sound, but it's amazingly enhanced. And the way we can share it is amazingly enhanced. Just even on a little thing called a mobile phone, we can now have sound and vision and connect in a really, really easy way. So coming back to concept one, you always get the result of your own mind and nothing can interfere with it. Let's now look at concept two. When you have an internal dialogue, you are in fact talking to yourself. No one else knows what you are going on about. So if you pray to God and say, God, please let my cancer go away, or let me win the lotto, or let me win the race, or let me progress in my work, you are in fact talking to yourself. Nobody else knows what you are going on about. And a lot of people get then disappointed in God because they believe they were actually asking God for help. But believe you me, you're talking only to yourself. Concept number three, source does not know of any problems because problems are of space and time. But if you come into a higher perspective, even in a new death experience coming to God's perceptive, you will realize there are no problems. All right. So again, there's the level of confusion here not to get caught in. 
in God's reality, there are no problems. On planet Earth, definitely there are problems. Okay? But asking the other level, God's reality, for help and focusing on your problems, you will be disappointed. Because reality doesn't know of problems, and that is in God's reality. You and I on planet Earth, yes, we do. So how then to communicate with source? Well, source responds to positive feelings, positivity, um, expressions of abundance, because this is the rudiment of the true reality of God that you can still find in yourself and express on planet Earth. So there's your point of contact. That's where you can ground spiritual power into the physical through positive feelings, abundance and positivity. Concept five. All creation is already completed. You are never adding to creation. Your function is to enhance what already is. So it has been said the little things can make a huge difference. And it's absolutely true. Because in the spiritual reality, there is no small or big. Everything is similarly powerful to the max. So if you can see through the human interpretation of love expression being small or big, but realize that all expressions of love are similarly powerful to the max. Then you can see it's like you can enhance your creation and you don't have to be like Tesla and invent electricity and dual currents or anything like that. No, in your own world, what's right happening you can allow for the creative light to come into your mind and change what is happening in the sense of experience because the universe is about experience, not about rearranging the pieces of the puzzle of a space and time. So concept six, your mind is always active, it never stops. So it has been said that each and every moment our mind receives 11 million bits of information. So since we only become aware of 40 bits, you can imagine there is quite a bit of selecting of sensory information going on. The brain structure that takes care of this is called the thalamus, and except for the sense of smell, all of the sensory information goes through the thalamus. And neuroscience discovered that if a sensory signal doesn't change within less than two seconds, the information is dumped. Indeed, it's that easy to get bored. So when you're bored, don't feel bad. It's natural. It truly is natural. It's the other way around. When you're never bored, mm, um, that is amazing indeed. So concept seven, when we have a moment and relax and not do anything, then our mind tries to beat its sense of boredom and starts wandering. And usually it picks up an unfinished business, and this is called ruminating. Even when we actively do something, still 50% of the time, our minds wander. And yes, you want to start doing uh, a job, and then your mind still wants to go, on. Oh, the foul look my boss just gave me. What was he thinking? Was it just a foul look? Or had this, am I going to lose my job? Or whatever. Your mind wanders keeps on going. Even when you're focused in the background, 50% of the time it is wandering. So next, concept eight. It is this natural and effortless capacity to wander that makes you the creator of your own reality. You can actually train this part of your mind to initiate you into thinking miraculously. You can give your mind <coughs> the tools and the thoughts that naturally allow the light and love of the universe, of God's reality, to ground into your physical life. And it will change your experience and it will make you happy. It will make you 
anticipate new things. Nothing makes you more happy than anticipating new things. Hey, I'm going on a holiday and seeing a place I've never been to. Yes, extremely exciting. So concept nine, the way you make decisions is very well mapped by neuroscience. We reach decisions intuitively and instinctually. All right, we reach decisions intuitively and instinctually. Real decisions are more about creative applications. Decisions begin with a desire, an emotion, a feeling or sensation. Secondly, a rational check is performed mostly to provide the reasons and explanations why the decision is justified. Next, you act and behave according to the decision. So remember this flow. Decisions begin with a desire, an emotion, a feeling or a sensation. Then there's a part of your mind that makes a rational check, but it's usually mostly to provide the reasons and explanation why the decision is justified. So next you act and behave according to the decision. And of course, there are killers to decisions and we'll have a look at them. So nothing is stronger than our urge to experience something new. Hey, let's start something exciting like um, maybe a doggy daycare center. Wow, how exciting. Work with puppies all days. Yeah, you did all your planning, but now you have two weaknesses that can demotivate you to follow up with a new idea. You're afraid of losing. Ooh, I have to give them my job and my income. Commercial leases are extremely expensive. Or number two, you allow yourself to be influenced by other people who will go on about, what about this? What about that? How are you going to manage? Where are you going to get clients from? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, this is what we deal with every day, probably. Nothing is stronger than our urge to experience something new. However, we have two weaknesses that can demotivate us to follow up with new ideas. You may be afraid of losing. You may allow yourself to be influenced by other people. Concept 11. The most beautiful joy is rewarded you when you live in anticipation. Happiness is not a permanent condition. It is always changing, yet naturally your goal is to be happy. So by asking the right questions, your brain will generate, generate an emotional impulse that it subsequently backs up with supporting facts in creating joyful anticipation. So again, the most beautiful joy is rewarded you when you live in anticipation. Happiness is not a permanent condition. It always changes. Yet, naturally, your goal is to be happy. So by asking the right questions, your brain will generate an emotional impulse that it subsequently backs up with supporting facts in creating joyful anticipation. So you can see we're going into the idea of Training your mind, training your mind uh, as part of the Project Love Map. Concept 12. Anticipation is not the same as expectation. So anticipate to witness miracles, but keep your expectations simple or you will not be able to see. So I always give this example. All right, you go to town to find this perfect set of shoes. They're brown, they have a little lace, a buckle on the side, the heel needs to be just perfect. They need to be all leather and made in Italy. Chances are you're going to be frustrated like hell because you can't find your shoes. And you were so locked into your outcome, you were so result minded that you were not open to experience the miracle. So the universe is singular. And you and your own mind are singular, but the universe looks after everyone. And so randomness is a strange phenomenon. Uh, it's an awful phenomenon if you want to control everything that happens so everything goes your way. So I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Keep your expectations simple and be open-minded. Look with your spiritual eye. Remain singular. 
right? It's just you in your mind experiencing your own thoughts and emotions and you get frustrated with your own expectations. Then you can get extremely down from being confronted with the way the world works um, and there's plenty of corruption and this can be really, really demeaning and demotivating and lead you into depression. Yeah. So look with your spiritual eye, um, seek you first the kingdom of heaven. Remain singular, align yourself with source and be miracle minded. Always be open for source to change things around and to lead you into happiness. Just don't fill in the blank and tell the universe how this should be happening because that's a high expectation and more likely than not, you will be disappointed. So in summary, creativity is not about learning concepts and adapting someone else's insight. It's about coming to know how the love of source works its miracles through you. So the project love method then is about training your mind. So you align with the thinking of the universe and you allow the love and light to come in. And so miracles can be worked for you. And it is your birthright to experience miracles and miracles should be happening naturally. So, you just are now aware that asking for help is an action of mind. It's not method of stilling the mind, being mindful, manifesting for that manner, but in a way to function as a channel of communication. Channeling the love of source into our being, loved ones and life situation. At the level of miracles, giving and receiving are the same. So what then is a good decision? Well, a good decision is one which gets shared and is one where you allow for the miracle to happen. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon at the Project Love.